All right, Chiefs Kingdom, I need you to get in the comments below and name a wide receiver that you were looking to step up in the coming days. Is it Kadarius Toney? Is it Sky Moore? Is it Mike Evans? We're going to find out. We're going to answer all your questions and more here on today's show. I'm Jay Sanders, and this is the Chiefs Report. All right, Chiefs Kingdom, let's dive right into it. RJ Shark has our first question of the day. His question is, what wide receivers would you want to step up and be that receiver one, except Tony, or would you trade for a receiver during the season or looking ahead to the 2024 NFL draft? Well, there's no secret that the 2024 draft has a lot of studs coming out of it, but I think the big thing is the guys that you're looking, Marvin Harrison, guys like that, you're not going to be, or at least hopefully not going to be in that draft range. So I think the problem is going to be have to be filled either internally or with a trade. Now, the three receivers that you think could fix the problem internally, well, it's Kadarius Toney, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, and Sky Moore, and they did not do their job last night. They did not do anything well last night. Kadarius Toney cost the Chiefs the game, to put it really bruntly, and facts are facts. He gave up seven points by dropping a pass and then dropped another one that probably would have gotten the Chiefs into field goal range. Marquez Valdez Scantling, I mean, he did what he could. Every reception, every target he had, he caught, got a 48, got 48 yards. But Sky Moore ran the second most routes of any receiver and got three targets and dropped one of them. This isn't acceptable numbers. This is not acceptable numbers, especially for Sky Moore. He needs to step up. He needs to step up. There was a pass at him in the hands. Was it a little high? Yes but you are in the National Football League. If it hits your hands, you catch the ball. That's all you need to do, and I think he can do it. I like Sky Moore. I'm not trying to dog on him. I know he's got the skills, but you got to be better. And week one, I understand it's week one. you got to be better, though. And Sky needs to step up. I think that's the first guy I'm looking for internally, that he needs to step up. He needs to kind of get on the, hey, you're wide receiver three on this team. You're wide receiver, wide receiver three on the reigning Super Bowl champions. Got to step up. Got to be better. You just got to, you got to play like you want to be here. And last night, it did not seem like that. I want to hear from you, though, because those are the three that I think, maybe the top three wide receivers. But name a receiver that you're looking to step up. It could be Justin Ross. He was only used in a very minimal amount of snaps last night. I hope that he's used kind of more throughout the season. But who knows? Maybe Rasheed Rice. He had a touchdown uh, couple, uh, on Thursday night. There's a couple of guys, but I want you to get in the comments. Let me know which receiver you are looking for on this Chiefs roster to step up in the next coming weeks against the Jaguars and throughout the entire season. Before we get to the next question, I'll be talking all about these wide receivers on my Twitter, and I got a little bit of a deal for you. See, this weekend it's all wide receivers because of what transpired on Thursday night and the absolute diabolical thing that the wide receivers did to the Chiefs by just giving away the game. And so what we're going to do is, I'm talking receivers on Twitter, if you follow me, first five followers, you're going to get a shout out on a future video. We're going to shout you out here on the Chiefs report. So the first five followers, at Jace Andrews underscore, go follow me on Twitter. We'll put the link in the description below as well. If you go follow me, the first five, you're going to get a shout out on the Chiefs report. Let's move on to the second question. And this one comes in from Kel Zinfer. I hope I'm saying that right. I clicked your profiles. Kel Zinfer. Anyway, the question is, is Kadarius Toney still wide receiver one? Because we're done if he is. He had one catch and five drops. He literally sold the win. So I will say this, and this is not to back Kadarius Toney or anything. He had three drops. He had five targets, uh, one catch. So the three drops, though, hit him in the hands. You can't do anything about that. To be quite honest, though, there's never been a true wide receiver one. Kadarius Toney was not a wide receiver one. Mark Valdez Scantling is not a wide receiver one. Sky Moore is not, a, is not even a wide receiver one. He may not be a freaking wide receiver two after what I saw last time or a couple nights ago. And it's hard because you want a wide receiver one. That's what you want. And that's what the Chiefs kind of expected out of Kadarius Toney after they got him from the Giants and now this year kind of with that. But there was never a true wide receiver one. That never was the plan. It was, it was a wide receiver by committee. And we saw how that went for the Chiefs two nights ago. I don't necessarily think that it's Kadarius Tony's to Jeff Kadarius Tony alone to step up, but rather this wide receiver core needs to understand that seven wide receivers in this group 
all of them are going to get past you, you better all catch the ball because the drops are just unacceptable at this point, especially, oh, it, it really pains me to talk about it. Let's go to the third question. First one's coming up, or third one, rather, the current Slayer, current Slayer here with the question saying, now what do you think the odds are we get Mike Evans? And do you think we can still make the playoffs? So I kind of alluded to this earlier in the show. Mike Evans' possibility of a trade? That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea because I just mentioned, there's no wide receiver one. There's not a wide receiver one. Kadarius Tony is not a wide receiver one. I don't think he can be. We'll see if I'm wrong, whatever. But after the absolute debacle in the wide receiver room on Thursday, it's not a bad idea. It's not bad at all to see and just explore a trade for Mike Evans. I saw one that was kind of a proposed trade. I forget where, but this is what has kind of been floating around the internet of the Chiefs trading for Mike Evans and getting, or excuse me, trading for Mike Evans and returning to the Buccaneers a 2024 third round pick and Richie James to the Bucks. I like that. That's not a bad trade. Richie James is a good wide receiver. I think he has potential, but if you're getting Mike Evans and you, all you got to do is give up a third round pick in Richie James, that's pretty good. If the, if the Buccaneers would accept that, I would do that all freaking day. You give Mike Evans to Patrick Mahomes, get ready. I mean, that, that would just be a lethal offense like one you've never seen. On top of the fact you're going to get Travis Kelsey back in the near future as well. So I like the trade. Will it happen? Yeah, to find out, but after Thursday night, it's becoming more of a possibility we see that potential potential trade happen. All right, let's go to the next question here, and it's from Wayne Neal 9416 He says, do you think that it was disrespectful of, of Jones to show up at the game? Now, if you don't know what he means, Chris Jones showed up last night at Arrowhead Stadium in a suite. He sat in his little suite with his two agents to his right and to his left there. Kind of looked like mob bosses, got to be honest. They were protecting him all night long. Um, I don't think I was taking it that way as disrespectful, so to say. It wasn't necessarily a, hi, I'm going to show you guys up. He was there to support his teammates. Because at the end of the day, uh, part of the Chiefs or not, this, these are his teammates. Him and Patrick Mahomes are tight. Him and Travis Kelsey are tight. Him and the entire Chiefs staff, everybody, they're all tight. Like, they all know each other. He likes them. He wants to be a chief. It's just he wants his money, too. I don't think it's necessarily disrespectful. I'm not taking it that way. If you are, let me know, because, I mean, that totally could be what, maybe it was disrespectful to you. I get it. Uh, but I, I don't think I'm personally taking that to heart as a, like, oh, I'm going to stick it to the chiefs by going to the game and being there and being put on national television. No, that, that's not exactly what I'm going to do, to be honest. I think the better way to put it would be, again, he's there to support. I like it more than anything because that kind of shows that he is basically saying, I want to be here. I want to be here. And it's just hopefully a matter of time before a contract gets done or he ends this holdout. That's the hope, but we'll just have to wait and see. All right, next question coming in here from Vlog Time. Appreciate you, Vlog Time. And you said, should we trade Chris Jones? So this is kind of piggybacking off the last question and kind of this whole Chris Jones situation we're going through. The first thing is that Jones is holding strong in not giving up what he wants. And if you don't know what he wants, we've kind of talked about this on the show, but let's bring it back up real quick. Supposedly, or reportedly, this week, it was re reported that Jones and the Chiefs were $9 million, $9 million off in contract negotiations. And at this point, that's not chump change anymore. I mean, $2 million for a guy like Chris Jones, eh, you could say, cool. But $9 million, not chump change, and that's what they're off on in terms of contract negotiations. Uh, there's been no progress made between the two sides in the past couple of days. Obviously, with the game and the season opening, I don't really expect Brett Veach to be thinking, oh, well, we got to sign him because at that point, I mean, by Monday of this past week, it was obvious he wasn't going to play on Thursday night against the Lions. So no progress there. And then obviously we just showed you that Jones was, was in Arrowhead for the Lions game. I think in terms of your question, Brett Veach would be smart to listen to offers. Certainly so, because if you get a good one and you're thinking, all right, well, we're not going to sign him, 
and at best he comes back and plays the latter half of the season for us, and then he signs somewhere else next offseason, we can get somebody for him. I mean, it's not a bad idea. This defense didn't look didn't look bad at all without him. Obviously, it would look 10 times better with Chris Jones, but allowing 14 points to a high-powered offense, that's not that bad. Obviously, this other seven points coming off the interception. But I think this one is an answer, a question for all of Chiefs Kingdom. Would you trade Chris Jones? I mean, he's been a guy that is Mr. Chief in some ways. I mean, obviously, it's become Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. But if you rank the top three players, I would have to say it's number one is Patrick Mahomes. And I would honestly say honestly say 2A and 2B is Kelsey and Travis, Kelsey and Chris Jones. So I want you to let me know what you're kind of thinking on this topic. If you're thinking that we should trade Chris Jones, I want you to type T in the chat. If you think we should keep Chris Jones and try and get this contract worked out, I want you to type K in the chat for keep. So T for trade, K for keep. Get in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking and what you would do if you were Brett Beach. All right, the last question here. And it comes from my boy Vlog Time again. As got a double question for Vlog Time, he was filling up the chat. Really appreciate you. If you want to be on the show, by the way, we'll do a bunch of mailbags throughout the year. The YouTube community, we're going to post on there. You can follow me on Twitter again. Shoot me a question there. We'll get you. But Vlog Time, appreciate my man. His second question said, "Who stood out in the game versus the Lions, in your opinion?" And I think again, I'm going to continue around this Chris Jones thing. And it was the guy who filled in for him, Michael Dana. Absolute monster, had six tackles, a sack, was in the backfield a majority of the night. Goff was really, I mean, did he have a couple of times where he had a good pocket? Yeah, but that's just the football game. It's going to happen. We're going to have a good pocket every now and then. But overall, Michael Dana was in the backfield. He was stopping the run. And on top of which, George Karloftis was getting back there too. Overall, the D-line wasn't the issue. I think the bigger thing was more missed tackles in the secondary. And that last drive, I think, I don't really know how to describe it because the Lions did kind of just run through the defense. I think more or less it may have been fatigue and just really a good good drive. I mean, they ran the right plays. Dan Campbell was calling really smart and good formations to just break through the defense, and it, it worked. But overall, Michael Dana or Michael Dana, excuse me, really filled in well. I liked what I saw from him, and the hope is he can continue that for as long as we don't see Chris Jones. All right, one last time again. We're going to be talking Chiefs all weekend long and this whole – wide receiver, what's going to happen, Mike Evans trade, we don't know. I'm going to be talking it all weekend on my Twitter, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, at JaceAndrews underscore, it's right there. You can also click the link in the description. We'll have it in the comments, and just go to Twitter and follow me. Again, the first five followers, you're going to get a shout-out on a future Chiefs report, and uh, we'll see you on that future Chiefs report. Peace out.